I'm John Haas. With a background in sustainability and a passion for fishing, I travel the world to showcase the good, bad, and ugly around sustainable fisheries. Haas Off The Grid uses the excitement, adventure, and direct connection to nature inherent to the sport of fishing to show the need for stewardship. I go off the grid to show some of the world's greatest fish and fisheries, creating awareness about the threats to their status and promoting a conservation ethic. We have too much power over what lives and dies on this planet to not care and take ownership. Together, we can make a difference. On this trip, we'll be heading east to test our luck fly fishing one of America's iconic blue water rivers, the Yellowstone. Located in Montana, the Yellowstone River flows south through Livingston, where we'll be launching out of. We'll take a look at the history and current conditions of the Yellowstone as we drift down, looking for our own picnic basket of fun, hopefully filled with brown and rainbow trout. I'll be fishing with an old friend of mine, John Yusko, in a friendly rivalry for Top Rod. John and I go way back to the days of growing up skateboarding and playing in bands in Phoenix. That's me in the back. We fished together once before, years ago in Baja. Nice fish. This was my first attempt at a rooster fish on a fly from the beach. After a quick here's how, we split up and I connected with a nice rooster to take top rod for that day. Here's some archival footage of that fish, taken from a camera on my ATV, a 25 pound rooster fish, caught from the beach, weighed and released. But this time, it's in his backyard. The Yellowstone is the last free flowing river in the lower 48 states. From its headwaters in Lake Yellowstone, downstream 670 miles to the Missouri River in North Dakota, the Yellowstone River flows as it has for centuries, in its natural state, undammed and untamed. As it flows through Montana, the big river goes through many changes. From steep walled canyons, where boulders turn its green waters, to the eastern part of the state, where the river broadens to take a lazy path through fertile farm country. Unfortunately, the last 100 years have been hard on the Yellowstone. A century of farming and ranching has degraded the riparian habitat, resulting in chronic low flows and made worse by high water temperatures caused by years of drought. Miles of riprap line the river's banks, disconnecting it from its natural floodplain. In recent years, the threat of poorly planned oil and gas pipelines have resulted in two pipeline spills into the river during winter and spring flows. There are two indigenous species of trout in the Yellowstone, the West Slope cutthroat trout and the Yellowstone cutthroat trout. In 1889, the U.S. Bureau of Fisheries began a 60-year program of stocking and introducing some non-native species of trout, including browns, rainbows, and lake trout, to the river and its lakes. The browns and rainbows in the river have been reproducing by themselves since the mid-50s, and now most folks consider them native but not indigenous. The Yellowstone River is considered to be one of the greatest trout streams in the world, and it's officially classified as a blue ribbon stream in Montana. In late summer, wind gusts across hayfields blows a lot of grasshoppers into the river, which creates explosive topwater action from big fish. The most productive stretch of water is through Paradise Valley, especially near Livingston. But recently, the river has seen a huge die-off of whitefish in the days leading up to this trip. Hey, it's Haas. It's a Dawn Patrol on the Yellowstone. We're in Montana. I'm fishing with Chad Olson from Greater Yellowstone Fly Fishing Outfitters. And my good buddy, John Yusko, up in the front, who we're staying with out in uh, Bozeman. Um, we've got some challenging condi conditions today. The water levels lo are low. It's pretty hot. It's really hot. And, uh, you know, so we're going to go through and try and catch fish on a fly. We'll be using a variety of methods from you know, drives with droppers, streamers. We'll have to nymph if we can't get them that way. We'll do whatever it takes to get some big fish in Montana on the Yellowstone. So stick around. We'll be right back on Haas Off the Grid. Coming up, we'll stop in for a visit with Sims to take a look at how they make the world's best waders. We'll take a minute for the planet and look at the current state of the Yellowstone River and settle the score for top rod on the river. All this and more coming up after the break. I'm in Montana fly fishing the Yellowstone River for brown and rainbow trout. The conditions are challenging, but the rivalry for top rod propels us forward as we toss hoppers and streamers and try to figure out how to unlock some takes. There he is. 
Yeah. Oh. 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 So close. So close. Yeah, me and Isco, we got this first biggest and most thing going on. There. So first fish is kind of important. That's a oh, that's a start a here. Streamer. It comes a big one. And someone that's gonna eat this big articulated leech is gonna have a little bit of side to it. There's gonna be no baby rainbow like Yusko's gonna pick up. <laughs> There's one. Oh, yeah, there you go. Get that oh, fish. Oh, he can't. Oh, it was a good fish, Hoss. Oh. Dang it. That was a nice brown. That could right have been there. biggest that right bigger, there. That was a big brown. You just gave up biggest, I think, right there. You're yeah. coming out of dinner and Hoss is like, there's one. Yeah. Fish all. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Get them in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a bow. A bow bow. Yeah, it's a bow. That'll make the arm feel better. Oh, it's feeling better already. Hot's oh, gonna get the first. <laughs> and yeah. the biggest so far. That's right. Yeah, Rainbow, nice. It's a nice Rainbow. Good job, good job. Let's double it up. Yeah, can you double that up? This left bang, I'm gonna get one. You got a spot to pull over I'm gonna get one while that fish is abusing you. We're just gonna walk over to this bank. Some soft water. Let this fish go. He wants to sit right off of your board. Nice to see a rainbow eating this dreamer. Eating the Dalai Lama. Yeah. Pretty. Beautiful Montana native rainbow. These are the cool thing about the Yellowstone, they're all native fish. See how beautiful they are. Beautiful rainbow. Took this olive colored Dalai Lama. We've had luck with the Dalai Lama before. That's pretty much a go to fly. Sweet. Let's check out this beautiful rainbow. Whoa. Whoa. There. Okay. Beautiful rainbow right there. Native rainbow on the Yellowstone. Don't let this fish go. You can move the net Give out. Give it a drink. It's a beautiful fish. Thank you, fish. We appreciate that. Boy, it's thick, too. Look at how thick the belly is. Chunky, little white tips. Just a beautiful fish. OK, we're going to let this fish go. Appreciate it, fish. Thank you for all you've done for us today and entertaining our viewers at home. Thanks, Chad. Yeah, nice Good fish. job. Good there he goes. Nice. All right. Yeah. Woo! Nice work, man. All right, man. That's there first. Goes. Hey, it's Haas. I'm in Bozeman, Montana. And one of the cool things to do when you're in Bozeman, well, for me, since I'm a fishing geek, is to check out where some of the best fishing products are made, and that's Sims Fishing Products right here in Bozeman, Montana. And I've got Rich Hahn. Rich, what do you do for Sims? So I'm our director of communications, John, so I work in marketing and PR and, and all sorts of fun stuff. Give a lot of tours, which we're gonna do today, which yeah. I'm excited to show you guys around. I'm really highlighting the fact that we make the best fishing waders in the world right here out of the best materials by anglers. We're really proud of what we do, so we'd like to show it off. All right, yeah. awesome. I'm looking forward to it. Let's go take a look at how Sims makes the best waders in the world. Let's do it. All right. You know, making the best waders in the world starts with the best materials in the world. So right here, we've got our rack of, of Gore-Tex material, right? So we're using mostly three and five layer Gore-Tex material. Three layers mostly on the uppers where you need a little bit uh, more breathability, if you will. Five layers are really nice on the bottom to get a little bit more abrasion resistance, right. a little tougher. You're walking through bramble and brush and those type of things. The crew here is working on the, putting the patterns together um, on a sheet and rolling it out on this big plotter, basically a really big, wide uh, printer, if you right. will. And then we're going to come over here on this table here where they're going to lay out the Gore-Tex material and actually hand cut it, which we'll see here in a little bit. Awesome. Ian here is cutting out the individual patterns of the Gore-Tex that we're going to see put together and made into waders here in a little bit. The improvements in textile technologies have just really, really started to take off. Kind of a lot of real technical fabrics. You know, the shirts in the summer like we're facing right now, a little bit warmer temperatures that allow you to both fight the sun and, and breathe really well and right. stay remain cool. Right. right? Um, and then in the, in the colder months when you're wearing our Gore-Tex waders, you can layer underneath them properly using advanced technologies and layering. You can really extend your fishing season, which is what we're all about here. We're really obsessive about making sure that each step is, is done meticulously so that when you're on the water, you just put your waders on and go fishing. Right. You don't worry about, am I going to be cold today? Am I going right. to be wet today? Um, we've assured that you're not going to be. Well, it's really cool to see 
you know, products made in America, you know, that by hand, the kind of quality that you really want when you're, you know, when you're fishing day, your fishing career kind of depends on a critical piece of equipment. You know, your waders have got to be there. This is the end of the process, John. Um, this is where they're testing each individual wader. So we make these in, in bunches of four, but we test each individual one. We don't just spot test throughout the day. We want to make sure when that angler pulls that wader out of the box, puts it on, that it's not going to leak. Rich. Thank you very much. You got it, John. It's a pleasure having you here. I'm glad all of your viewers and fans are going to be able to appreciate what we do here in yeah. Bozeman. No, I appreciate what you guys do, and we look forward to doing more things with Sims and, and you know, trying to make this a drier fishing experience. That's right. That's what we're all about. All right. Great, Rich. Thanks, buddy. Thanks. We're in Montana fly fishing one of the most iconic rivers in America, the Yellowstone. I'm fishing with my old buddy, John Yusko, trying to find a big brownie or rainbow to take a dry fly so I can take top rod. The temperature is high and the water's low, making conditions tough, but not impossible. Hey, it's Haas. We're on the Yellowstone River. We're doing a little trout fishing, We're trying to get some fish to come up and eat dries. We got some grasshopper imitations and some other uh, imitations that uh, will fish dry. We'll also drop a, a nymph off of a drop or two. There's fish in seven weight rods, sixes and sevens, floating lines, and uh, probably about a seven foot, eight foot leader. We're, you know, we're fishing at a first light and the sun started to come up, the water temperature is going to start changing on us. And as a consequence, we'll probably see hopefully some more activity out of these fish. We've had a few risers, a couple that had some size to them that uh, didn't come connected. A little snit rainbow. All right. A little snit rainbow. Hey man, yeah. it's, it's a it's a live creature. Yeah. We'll take a lot, little live creature right now. Hey, gotta get the stink off. That's really the key, right? Get the stink off. All right, double us up. All right, get I'm in there, to man. Double us up here. Get us a fish on. Get in there, man. It's good seeing those cut bows, man. Huh? I love cut bows. Little little cut bow. Sweet. We let that guy go. I know what's going on. Whew. I think all fly fishermen have a love affair with brown trout just because they're such car carnivores. You know? They are. They're meat eaters. Sometimes I think we should make a bacon fly. <laughs> <laughs> Who don't like bacon? We are working it. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, a nice brown trout came up and ate that dry. Oh, that was nice. Yeah. Woo! Nice. Let's take a look yeah. at him. Yeah, what's down? Wow, that's a good fish. That's, that's a beauty it. fish, yeah. Look at that thing. Beautiful brown yellow stick. Right, give him a drink, give him a drink. Put him back in the water for a second. All right, check this guy out. That's a beauty brown. Whoa. There he goes. Nice release. There he goes. <laughs> Get out of there. Too many moving parts. All right, that was awesome. Nice brown. Get off, off the grid. grid. Get right. out of the grid inside your mind. <laughs> Get your mind right. That's right, man. That's how you do it. Off, off the grid. <laughs> People take it literally. <laughs> it's about getting out of my head. <laughs> getting on the water, get out of my head. Right. Come on, fish. That's the party I signed up for right there. Chad, this fish is below us, so just a heads up. Yeah. It's a brownie. Yeah. Awesome eat. We needed a dry fly eat. All right, let's give him a drink. All right, Yusko. Yeah. Awesome. We finally got a nice dry fly eater, huh? Yeah, that was yeah. a great take, too. Patience, Just came man. up. Yep, that, yeah, was, that was took, took some time, but it happened at the perfect moment. We needed one, so. Yeah, we needed a big Yellowstone Brown, and there he is. Wow. Buttery, yep, yep, yep. Beautiful. He really ate that thing, too. Yeah, do you see? I saw it came down, down river. Turn, it came down river, and yeah, just. He inhaled it. Yeah, yeah. He was not messing around. That was nice. Not at all. You want to let him go, John? 
the release? I would love to let All right. Yeah. Yeah. Check it out. Give him a drink. Yeah, gave him a drink. John was nice enough to let me release this fish. What a beautiful brown trout, native brown. Although they're not indigenous, this fish has gone through a lot of generations to get to this point. Check out that coloration. I love the, the brown to red. A lot yeah. of times, too, you'll see them look at these beautiful blues in their gill plate. That's great. Give them a drink. Beautiful fish. We're going to let this fish swim off. Brown trout on the Yellowstone River on Haas off the grid. All right. I'm on the Yellowstone River doing some dry fly hopper fishing with an old buddy of mine, John Yuska. So wow, check it out. These are whitefish, and we're seeing whitefish, dead whitefish along the shoreline and then floating in the water. We've actually seen whitefish dying in the water trying to swim. Don't know if it's temperature related or not. That's why we're very careful when we catch a fish to make sure it stays in the water and we don't hold it out of the water for very long. As you can see the fish so far today, I haven't held them out of the water for more than a second before they swam off. But the point is, you know, they've put in place some uh, mandatory rules that when the water temperature gets too hot, like last week, the water temperature, the air temperature was in the 90s, very concerned about the fish, so they cut off fishing on the rivers at two o'clock to make sure that the water didn't get too, too hot and impact the fish. So when you're out there, realize that every time you hold that fish out of the water, it has an impact. So get it back in the water as soon as you can. And let's find out what's going on with these whitefish. This Eco Moment is brought to you in part by the CCA. I'm here with Scott Bossy from American Rivers. Hey, Scott. Howdy, John. Thanks for having me. We were fishing the yellow zone and uh, had some great action. But we saw a lot of things happening out there. We saw that white fish die off that was go that's going on in real time right now. The low water levels, the heat of the rivers, you know, as a consequence of low water levels. Yeah. Um, and I know that the, you know, the, there's been all kinds of uh, struggles around the water rights and, you know, allocating enough water for the river and the fisheries to be, you know, out of the danger zone, because it seems like they're kind of in a danger zone here when they're closing down the fishing in the afternoons to conserve, uh, uh, conserve fish, right? The, yeah. So what does American Rivers do uh, around the, the Yellowstone River. So the Yellowstone is really special because it is the longest major undammed river in the lower 48 states. This is one of the rivers that we're trying to get wild and scenic designation for. And when you protect a river under the Wild and Scenic Rivers Act, it guarantees that that river remains clean, free-flowing, and its special values are maintained. That's great. So it's the highest level of protection you can give a river, not only in the United States, but anywhere in the world. You know, rivers are a living, breathing thing, right? They have to move as the situation requires it to move and they evolve over time and if you restrict that then you know, you're basically you know, killing off that river in a sense right we always say if they're not changing they're dying yeah, yeah. rivers are real a healthy river is really dynamic yeah and there's no more dynamic river in the lower 48 states than the yellowstone well all right scott hey appreciate your time and tell us a little bit about what american rivers does to help protect the environment and the habitat They aren't dropping like flies, are they? They're going through a lot of good water. We're about challenge on this show. <laughs> Not afraid of it. <laughs> that was something. A little tap tap. Looked like a little tap tap. Oh, yeah. Great. Oh, nice. Great fish. That's a nice great. fish. Look at that thing pushing Dude, that water. Look at that fish. That's a big brown. That's fish. awesome. That was a Awesome, oh, man. man, that's great. Awesome. I'm reeling. Yeah, it's time for a hopper. God, he just pounded that thing. I saw it when he ate it. It was, <laughs> it was like watching a big redfish eat Dude, on a fly. I know. You know? It was cool. Yeah! That's a fish. solid brownie. That is a good one. Pretty fish. Wow, that's a beauty, John. Yep, that's a pretty fish right there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you see. Oh. Wow, that's what it's all about. 
That is a beautiful Montana brown. That's some gold there, man. Look yeah. at the color in that boy. Ooh, That's on a hopper. Beautiful. On a hot dry on a hopper is why wow. we came here today. Yeah. Five in, five in the morning. Yeah. Now we definitely put in our time and we've had some fish, but nothing of this caliber. Maybe that first fish in the morning that jumped. And to see yeah, that, that and to see that eat. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Fish was in shallow water, yeah. man. Yeah, and a lot of these fisheries that get a lot of pressure, you see, a lot of these fish will have, you know, yeah. scars and stuff. This fish is... He's pretty clean. He's totally clean. Yeah, this fish a, is not a clean copper. Yellowstone brown trout. Mm. That's beautiful. Okay, you ready, yeah, brother? I'll check him out. Yeah, that's an adult. Pay, payoff. That was a big payoff. Score. You're on that hopper all day long. <laughs> committed. Committed. He's got to be persistent. Water. That was an awesome trip. I mean, we had a lot of action on that trip. We got a lot of flies. We went through a lot of different, you know, techniques. And I wanted to say thanks to Sims. Yeah. You know, Sims really did a lot Sims. to help us out on this Sims. trip. We hope that, you know, the Yellowstone stays the way it is. Yeah. The trout get bigger. We yeah. figure out what's going on with the whitefish die off. Yeah. That's, that's hopefully we'll know more soon about that, and hopefully we'll have a good, good big snowpack this winter and yeah. big high water year next yeah. year. That'll, That'll be, be great. Trail population. Yeah. All right. Until next time, tight lines on Hoss off the grid. John Haas, Haas off the grid, HaasOffTheGrid.com. Go check it out because it's got it going on. It's a little theme song for the show.